So welcome and uh, bon dia. Thank you for welcoming us here today uh, to our, our talk, Empowering Careers, Cultivating Soft Skills in English Learners. My name is Eric Zuarino, and I'm a product owner in the Cambridge University Press and Assessment Office in New York. And over the past couple of years, I've been focusing on the inclusion of employability skills in our English language course materials from a product development perspective. Thanks, Eric. And I'm Katie Lestoria. I'm a product manager in the New York office. And for the past couple of years, my focus has been on the strategy involved with our employability skills material at Cambridge. OK, so uh, first I'll take you through the agenda for today. Uh, first, we'll talk about what employability skills are and then why we need them in this, in this new world that we're in. Why is employability skills such a buzzword right now in our field? Then we'll go into uh, a response to that that Cambridge has developed, which is the Cambridge Employability Skills Framework for ELT. And then we'll look at some practical ways to integrate employability skills with our English courses. And then finally, we'll look at the use of micro-credentials to motivate and prove skills mastery. Okay, so first off, Katie's gonna kick it off Thank with a de you. definition of employability skills. Wonderful, thank you. Um, so in thinking about what employability skills are, I think it's really helpful to talk about what they aren't first. So they are more than just language proficiency. Um, we know as educators that to be comfortable in a language, you need to understand cultural references as well. Not just vocabulary, not just syntax, etc. It's also really important to engage in the right sorts of behaviors in different cultures. And what I mean here by cultures in this point is cultures that transcend geography. Things such as an office culture, for example. Employability skills are also more than what I like to call traditional get a job skills. Now, as educators, we already include lessons on how to, for example, create a resume or how to prepare yourself for a job interview. And those are incredibly important skills for learners to master, absolutely. Employability skills teach learners how to navigate different scenarios that could be encountered in the career world. And very importantly, they help to prepare learners for situations they won't be able to anticipate, but that they'll need to be able to successfully engage in. Oops, back. Okay, so you may recognize this. This is our wonderful Cambridge Dictionary here. And this is a definition for soft skills. And soft skills are incredibly important, and this is a fantastic definition. Well done, Cambridge Dictionary. So I don't have any problems with this definition at all. Employability skills are indeed soft skills, but they're almost a subset of soft skills. They're really focused, obviously, on the workplace and on successfully interacting in your career. It's those behaviors, attitudes, and skills that help you to be a successful employee. There we go. So these are a couple of definitions. I'll try to move out of the way so you can see them that I really like. The one on the left is by the National Institutes of Health in the US, and it's a really good, broad, umbrella definition for employability skills. Those skills that extend beyond the classroom, beyond academia, and have that direct impact on a student's future career prospects. The second one is a bit different but I also love that one. It's by the Association of Public and Land Grant Universities, 
and its focus is on the day-to-day -day interactions that make for a successful and smoothly running project or office. So these two definitions really work in tandem and they explain what employability skills are from different aspects. So employability skills set students up for success in the long term. They go beyond that one event that needs to be overcome, such as a job interview or creating a CV. They really provide a solid foundation for managing your career throughout your working life. And really importantly, these skills are transferable. They are not industry specific. They are equally as important to people who might work in a hotel, as to a teacher, as to an office worker, car mechanic, real estate agent. I won't list all the possible careers out there. These are very important skills for everyone. So why do we need them? We're going to talk for the next few minutes about three key points here. And we're going to start with the nature of work has changed. So graduates are currently leaving education and entering the workforce without the requisite skills to make them really employable. And this means that employers are having a difficult time finding appropriate candidates to fill, to fill the vacancies that they have. The second point we'll talk about in more detail soon, the impacts of COVID. I don't need to tell this group what a disruptive change COVID had on the educational system. And the third one is the rise of AI and that rapid shift in work. So there was a study by JP Morgan in the state of Sao Paulo about, uh, about employability skills and where students are right now, recent graduates. They found that students are entering the workforce unprepared and so it's incredibly important for educators to invest in training for employability skills. Some of their key findings are here. The first one is super obvious. Work in different sectors obviously requires different skills and different skill sets. However, common to all sectors is the importance of workforce socio-emotional skills. Socio-emotional employability skills. A few examples of this might include resilience or responsibility, perseverance, collaboration. And really interesting, they found that these skills are at least as important as such things as academic achievement, mastery of your degree field in predicting future employee success. There is a consultancy firm in the UK called the Chartered Management Institute, and they conducted several focus groups with various higher education institutions, hiring managers, and students in the UK. And we're going to go through some of their findings now. This first one is, is pretty worrisome. They found that nearly 80% of employers believe that graduates are not ready to transition into the workplace. They also found that employers are increasingly looking for employees who are comfortable and successful in working in a hybrid work environment. Some prospective employees might be able to work in that hybrid work environment, but they don't know how to signpost this anywhere to make this apparent to prospective employers. A few statistics here. Only 41% of non-business students have a LinkedIn profile, for example. 
only around a quarter of students know how to make it easily visible to prospective employers that they do have employability skills. And only, not even 30% of students are interested in digital badging. Eric will talk about that a little later. So, one of the findings from the CMI report was that employability should really be embedded into core curricula in order to support learners in developing these skills. And, extremely importantly, performance against employability skills should be tracked, just as we track learners' performance in any course. This helps learners in a couple of ways. Firstly, it lets them know how far they have to go and where they are in actually achieving those goals. Secondly, it really underscores to them the importance of employability skills for their future careers. Mm -hmm. There we go, okay. So, um, in addition to embedding employability skills into core curricula, higher education institutions in this study, in these focus groups, realize that they're not alone. They can also pull in employers to help them in training learners for employability skills. And there are lots of ways to do this. In addition to things such as employability modules, there can be internships or work placements, specific project work, which really helps learners understand what sorts of, what their careers could look like one day, but also how employability skills are going to be necessary in these jobs. So there was another study, I'm gonna give you lots of little research bits here, from the University of Strathclyde in Scotland that came out in 2024. They examined some of their students at the university between 2020 and 2022. And they focused on the impact of remote and hybrid learning on their students. We all remember that terrible time in mid-March of 2020 when our worlds turned upside down and we went from normal teaching, normal jobs into remote and hybrid situations. For all of us, but in particular and of interest to us today, is the impact that that reduced social interaction had on learners in their personal lives, but also in their educational lives. They no longer had that easy access to those wonderful casual conversations with teachers and classmates. And that resulted in a lot of feelings of loneliness and isolation. I know that we can all relate to that. All those Zoom calls we set up with family and friends to check in on them. So, in order for those students who had gone through that time with COVID to really regain the skills or gain the skills that they would have otherwise had developed during that time, this study said that employers were finding an increased importance on students' abilities to develop those socio-emotional skills Again, employability skills, things such as resilience, self-management, responsibility, autonomy, etc. This study nicely aligned with the CMI one, suggesting that we can accommodate this need by embedding employability skills into our curricula. That will help learners, even learners who've gone through COVID, to successfully transition into that next stage in their lives, into the workplace. So Forbes uh, had a recent article on the rise of generative AI 
and the importance of human skills. We know technical skills are important. Understanding how to work with generative AI is incredibly important. However, in order to really be successful in this new world of work, where generative AI has kind of in, invaded our lives, sounds very negative, I don't mean it that way, we need to be able to develop those socio-emotional skills in order to be successful. As generative AI becomes more and more embedded in our daily lives, machines are going to take on those easily automated tasks. I know in my own life, I'm always very grateful when I can use ChatGPT to summarize notes from a meeting, for example. The entrance of generative AI into our work lives, however, doesn't mean we're going to be replaced. That means that the things that we as humans can do are even more important. And we need to learn how to successfully interact with generative AI because it's not going anywhere. And those things, such as critical thinking, creativity, innovation, problem solving, negotiation, those things are all employability skills. So as my colleague Bridget Price over in the UK likes to, ah, in Mexico, sorry, likes to say, we need to learn how to make generative AI our colleagues. There was also a McKinsey report, because there are always McKinsey reports, that also supported this other research um, that talked about the Forbes research Advanced technologies, generative AI, is as that is becoming more and more frequent, more and more common, commonplace in the workplace, that means that there's an increase in the need for employability skills, those things that machines cannot do. There's a really interesting um, website called Skills for Jobs by the OECD. And this website identifies the skills that are in abundance in any particular country and the skills that are harder to find. Now, I'm gonna move out of the way here. As you can see from this chart, to the left, there are skills that are in abundance in this country, for the first one here, the United States. On the right-hand side, it's skills that are harder to find, meaning there's an opportunity and that students that we prepare with these skills will have a leg up. They'll have a greater chance of success in the workplace. So circled in red here in the United States, it's hard to find prospective employees that have the right attitudes about work. They currently lack communication skills, cognitive skills. So these are areas that in the United States, in the first instance, really need to be developed. This chart shows Brazil, and it's a really similar picture. Again, social skills, attitudes, cognitive skills, these are things that by focusing on training students in employability skills really helps them to rise to the top in any prospective employee pool. And we help to set them up for success in the long run. So I'm going to hand over to Eric to talk about Cambridge's response to all of this. Okay, thank you, Katie. <clears throat> okay, so we've talked about what employability skills are, uh, why they're so important right now in this uh, current working environment around the world internationally. Uh, so what can we do about that? Uh, so Cambridge's response is the Cambridge Employability Skills Work, uh, I'm sorry, framework for ELT. And if you look at this QR code, um, that will lead you directly to the framework. Over the next few slides, I'll uh, also include this QR code, just in case I go a little too fast for you. 
Um, so let's take a look at what this framework is all about. So the framework is a, a way to guide teachers on the integration of employability skills in English language teaching. And it makes sense of the skills that employees need to develop in order to be successful in their current and future careers. It's based on extensive research into employer needs and is aligned with the Cambridge Life Competencies Framework, uh, which you might be familiar with at this point as well. So in essence, it provides a map of the most important employability skills in a way that teachers can understand what the skills involve and to integrate them more systematically into their English language teaching. As you can guess, they are, it's, it's soft skills focused and it guides students toward an understanding of the behaviors within each of the skills or competencies. And we're not just focusing on those get a job skills, as Katie mentioned before. So writing CVs, uh, successfully going through a job interview. These are all very important uh, moments in your career life, but we're not focusing on that right now. We're focusing on the socio-emotional uh, skills that will set you up for success in any given workplace. We have eight competencies that are key to success in any working environment. And when I say that, I mean these skills are transferable among any working environment. So teachers, car mechanics, office workers, it applies to everyone here. And when we look at the competencies, we're talking about the skills, the employability skills. And you'll see this example here in the left column, innovation and problem solving. To make this a bit more accessible, we break these skills or competencies down into core areas in the middle column. Uh, these are really the broad skills and behaviors that make up each competency. So this one uh, highlighted here is developing a creative mindset, for example. And then we break those down even further into what we call components. And I like to think of the components as the can-do statements of the framework. These are the clear aims and outcomes to be achieved at the end of that lesson of, in, in which you apply the framework. Uh, and they are really the skills that apply to the skills and behaviors that are expected in the workplace. So I'm gonna go through each of the core competencies here. We have eight of them. And the first one we have is collaboration and teamwork. And it's important to note that successfully collaborating and working well in a team is a highly sought after employee attribute. And by integrating collaboration and teamwork into our lessons, we create a more inclusive classroom. And when we create a more inclusive classroom, that increases learner engagement. And surprise, surprise, that supports successful language acquisition. Students are speaking with each other. They're working in teams. This will also enable them to participate effectively in the workplace. So we break collaboration and teamwork down into the core areas of working well together in a group, completing collaborative tasks and projects, and dealing with conflict. Next up is communication, and I'm sure you all are very well aware that communication is essential to language learning. Students need to speak to each other. Uh, it's also essential in the workplace. Workers really need to be able to express themselves clearly in the workplace and appropriately in different modes of communication, written and spoken, whether it's with their colleagues, their clients, their, uh, their managers, they also need to be able to listen actively. And it also involves using nonverbal communication appropriately. And so communication has been broken down into the core areas of understanding others better, presenting views clearly and effectively, and adapting the way you communicate for different audiences and purposes. Next up is innovation and problem solving, which as a skill really demonstrates an employee's, ability to, uh, uh, an employee's ability to work under pressure and to make decisions. 
which in turn shows them to be a valuable resource to the company. And there was a study at the Pew Research Center in 2017 that identified problem solving as one of the most important skills to develop in order to succeed in the workplace of the future. So as new technologies continue to come into our personal and working lives, how are we gonna problem solve and take advantage of those technologies? Problem solving tasks also empower learners and they allow them to set their own agendas for how to go about solving issues. I know that when my manager uh, sets me up with a problem to solve, I feel like I have much more skin in the game. I feel motivated to solve that problem and get to that end result. This also generates a strong and immediate need for language in the classroom. And problem solving activities involve a more real world process than other types of classroom tasks. So for example, a student can simultaneously look at the process of solving a problem and that desired end result. And so innovation and problem solving are broken down into the core areas of developing a creative mindset, generating ideas and implementing ideas and solving problems. Critical thinking and decision making is our next skill and it's, it's obvious that employees really need to have strong analytical and evaluative skill in order to exercise careful judgments and make informed decisions. And so developing these tasks uh, leads to improved attention and observation and integrating critical thinking and decision making into our classrooms not only prepares learners to become uh, better workers, but it also sets them up for success and, and language acquisition. And so we've broken this down into the core areas of understanding and analyzing information and arguments, evaluating ideas and arguments, and making decisions. Okay, leadership and global citizenship. This is our next skill. And this is crucial for employees to successfully interact with their colleagues and clients. Leadership is really about taking responsibility taking responsibility for your work, for your teams, for your outputs, for your team's well-being. And it creates an opportunity for individuals to create change in the workplace. A key aspect of leadership is global citizenship. So more and more companies and businesses are looking beyond themselves and beyond their local communities. They're developing an awareness of the world around them and their roles and responsibilities in that wider, bigger world. This leads to more and more initiatives such as sustainability and EDIB. And it's important for learners to understand the importance of these and their role in the global community as well. So leadership and global citizenship is broken down into contributing to the success of an organization, demonstrating leadership, and contributing to an organization's positive role in global issues. Professional development. So the world is rapidly evolving. And in order for us to keep up, there is a lot that we need to be able to do and know in order to not be left behind. And so learners must continue to grow their employability skills through professional development and management through skills such as strategic planning, organizational ability. These are highly sought after by employers and they enable learners to meet deadlines and to maintain realistic goals. Professional development is an ongoing process. It promotes lifelong learning. And so the ability to adapt to the changes around us by developing these skills and knowledge in the business world will set us up for success in our current jobs and future careers. Professional development and management is broken down to the core areas of being organized and managing your professional developments. Emotional intelligence, this is one of the most important valued, uh, most important core skills uh, in the work, working world. 
And we have a rapidly changing world. We're constantly being confronted with changes to an organization, to an industry, and we need to be able to deal constructively with those changes to demonstrate a positive disposition and to maintain motivation despite those setbacks in order to get through it. It's clear that resilience, patience, adaptability, and self-awareness are key qualities that learners need to survive and thrive in their current and future careers. And so we've broken emotional intelligence down into the core areas of demonstrating self-awareness, acting with resilience, and demonstrating empathy and positive relationship skills. Our last competency is digital literacy, and it's clear, especially since 2020, that all fields of work are increasingly exposed to digital technologies and working environments. I'm mostly working on teams now. I go to the office three days a week, I work from home twice a week, but also most of my team is international, so I'm constantly in these, using these digital technologies in my flexible working environment. It, it, technology is integral to our personal and professional uh, lives. And so learners need to be digitally literate in order to take full advantage of those new technologies and those flexible ways of working and to, take the most, to make the most of opportunities that come with new technologies like AI. How are students going to use AI in a practical, uh, and responsible way, an ethical way? How are they going to keep safe uh, using these new technologies? And so digital literacy is broken down into using tools and creating digital content, sharing and interacting online, and safety and well-being online. So I know that was a lot of information. Um, you can, again, see the, the framework online for yourselves. But how do we integrate employability skills with our core English courses? You may already see examples of this in your current courses and in the way that you conduct activities in the classroom, through team projects, through uh, problem solving activities, uh, setting learning goals, and I mean, critical thinking. We, we have that just by the nature of holding a debate by evaluating texts and reviewing products. One thing I suggest is that when you look to supplement your courses, you look for something that specifically covers employability skills. And for our purposes today, I'm gonna to look at the examples of the employability skills and workplace essentials modules that Cambridge developed over the past few years. These are short digital courses eight units, eight hours long, uh, fully digital, and they're meant to be used flexibly to supplement any other course. They're also aligned to the Cambridge Employability Skills Framework for ELT. And the core courses I'm gonna use in my examples, I'm sure you may be familiar with, Interchange and Evolve Digital. So let's look at the example of Interchange 2 and Employability Skills Workplace Essentials. One thing I suggest when you try to combine tools and materials is to look at the syllabi and try to cross-check them and look for some skills or themes that match up across different units or lessons. So here in Interchange 2 and Workplace Essentials, we found the common skill of addressing local issues. Uh, in Unit 2 of Interchange, Life in the City, uh, we're looking at city services and we're writing a post about a local issue. In Workplace Essentials, we have a unit, Unit 5, which focuses on the framework competency of leadership and global citizenship. And then uh, we have, uh, from a business perspective, a, we're talking about how an organization can address a local issue. So the key speaking and writing objectives from Interchange, we have, we're talking about transportation and the issues around it, evaluating city services, and then writing about that local issue. And then to supplement, we have key objectives from the module. From a business perspective, 
where we're recognizing and describing issues, we're deciding how to help, uh, creating new initiatives around that issue, we're managing money around that initiative, and then writing about it from a business perspective. The next example we have is for evolved digital and employability skills at a slightly higher level. And so once again, we looked at common skills and themes across units. Uh, this time we found one uh, nicely that, uh, for responding to criticism. And in the evolved digital unit, we're looking at uh, negative product uh, reviews and uh, developing and presenting a plan uh, to address it. And then in unit eight of employability skills, we're looking at the Cambridge, uh, I'm sorry, the framework competency of digital literacy. So how can we respond to that negative product review as a business in order to uh, make sure that the client is happy uh, and uh, use polite and clear, concise language? So speaking and writing objectives for Evolve Digital, we have analyzing the product reviews, coming up with a plan, presenting the solutions to the class, and then agreeing on the best action plan. Meanwhile, from the module, we're looking at it from a digital literacy perspective as a business. How do we appropriately respond to a customer who's unhappy with something that we might have released? Uh, using cautious language, and then writing that reply. We want to keep that customer, so how should we go about that? So again, in essence, I suggest finding employability skills-focused supplements uh, to your courses, and compare, comparing the syllabi across the materials that you choose to find common skills and themes to help them really integrate in a more seamless way. Uh, it's also important to make sure that students are aware that employability skills are a part of the class objectives. Underlining their importance will help, uh, help them focus on that importance and help them to hopefully uh, see that as just as important as you know, learning the, the simple present or the simple past. I also suggest going to this link over here. This is the World of Better Learning blog. Uh, and this links directly to our articles focused on employability skills. Uh, there are plenty of really nice articles there uh, focusing on each of the competencies and specific activity types that uh, you can include in your classrooms. I'll give you a second to scan that if you want. Okay. And really, in practice, we have so many options out there. You could assign the supplemental materials when you've completed the core course in class, or you can assign it as independent work as you focus on the core course in the live classroom. Uh, and this really all depends on your class structure, uh, the format, your technology, and learner motivations. Okay, so when it comes to motivations, learners just like us really want to have something that they can take away with them to prove that they've mastered a set of skills. And one way to celebrate student achievements is the use of micro-credentials for verification and motivation. One type I'm sure you're very familiar with is the certificate of completion or participation as a micro-credential. You're all getting one today, I'm pretty sure. Um, and here's an example from the employability skills module. These are a great way to prove to your employers and prospective employers that you've mastered a certain skill, uh, skill set or have attended a conference uh, that's really important to your industry. But they're not the only type of micro-credential out there. There's also digital badges. Uh, these have be been becoming a bit more popular over the past few years, and these are tangible representations of an individual's competencies and skills. And the great thing about them is that they're shareable via LinkedIn or on resumes to prove your mastery of certain skills. They're easy the great thing is that they're easily shareable and identifiable, 
but also they're verifiable. So they have a lot of metadata behind them, which uh, includes things like the badge earner's name, uh, issuing organization name, the date, and the criteria that you met in order to have earned that badge. And so these are not really fakeable. It's not just a copy paste of an image. There's a lot of information within that badge that a potential employer can look at and verify that you've actually attained those skills. So clearly there are a lot of benefits to these. Uh, they're verified qualifications, they're accessible and portable, and they increase motivation and recognition. So when you increase motivation and recognition, you get that sense of accomplishment and a boost in confidence. And it's clear that uh, lifelong learning and skills development are all really important even after we complete our studies. Uh, an interesting quote from uh, LinkedIn here. They, they did a study into their social media site and they found that uh, members who had digital badges on their profiles were six times more likely to get profile views than those who did not. So to me, that's very clear that micro-credentials can help increase your visibility to prospective employers. And this is something that we can include when we uh, add employability skills to our English language courses. So that was a lot, I know. <laughs> uh, we're just gonna wrap up here. Um, so we talked about what employability skills are and why they're so important. Why is this such a big buzzword in our industry right now? And practical ways to implement and embed employability skills from the framework into our core English courses. And ways to prove uh, skills mastery through micro-credentials. So I'd like to leave you with this quote from William Butler Yeats, an Irish poet. Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire. So when we teach employability skills, we're not just filling the gaps, we're inspiring change. So let's be those torchbearers and let's ignite the flames of creativity, curiosity, and resilience. Thank you. Almost. There it is. Okay. Thank you very much. That was so great. Yeah. Thank you. It's wonderful to see that we can go so far beyond the language as it's itself. Because so much happens in the classroom. And, and it's so great that we can see that we can teach so many other things that will impact our students' lives in the future. So that's amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be taking questions now. Where is my friend Sergio? Uh, there. Do you have a mic? You got two mics. Okay. So we'll be taking questions from the audience. And if you are watching us online, you can send your questions in the chat. Do we have anybody over there? Over there, yeah. Oh. Is it on? There we go, yeah. Oh. Hi, good morning. It was a Hello. pleasure listening to you guys. Thank you so much for the contribution. I've got a lot of food for thought today. Um, I, my name is Elizabeth. I work at Centro Paula Souza, and we have already uh, brought the soft skills to our work through Instituto Ayrton Senna, which works with the big five concepts, which are very, very close to, to the skills you presented. They are a little bit fewer, so we can bring them to different subjects, not only English itself. And I have a question about the supplementary material that you presented. The idea of the material is teaching English through soft skills or soft skills through English. That, I'm sorry, I didn't get that so clear. So, so specifically about the modules that I showed, um, those are focused on soft skills. 
Um, so they are developed for English language learners, but the focus of the lessons is really on the soft skills and not the language. There may be some uh, language support in each unit, but really what, what we're focusing on for each of those units is one of those competencies in the framework. Anybody else? I know we had up here, no? It was the same question, oh good. Okay. <laughs> We're all in sync. Okay. <laughs> anybody else? Does anybody else have any questions? No? I know it's almost coffee time. <laughs> <laughs> Over there, yeah. Benna's reaching you, there we go. Hey, good morning, thank you morning. very much. Well, um, you've been talking about employability skills, how important they are, and I agree. My focus now is business English. But I'd like to know how can I help more experienced students to understand how important it is for them to keep developing those skills? Yeah, that's a really good question. <laughs> I think one of the things that I've been taking away as we, we were doing research for this presentation is the importance of highlighting the employability skill in the class objectives and making sure that students know that this is what, uh, an important aspect of what we're learning today in this lesson. We're talking about digital literacy and we might be talking about, for example, one of those uh, smaller components of the skill that uh, almost can do statements that you're taking away at the end of the lesson. Um, so I think highlighting those in the class objectives is really important but also reminding students that when they're learning um, employability skills, they're preparing for the workplace. And as you go into the workplace, you're continuing to learn. You're developing new skill sets in order to move up in an organization or business. Um, and so professional development is, uh, uh, it's an aspect of lifelong learning. And I think trying to highlight that and really underscore that professional development never really ends, that could be a really helpful uh, thing to do with more advanced students. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one more question. Does anybody have another question? No? All right. So our online folks were a bit shy uh, okay. at this session, um, but one of them said, it's such a relief to find employability skills embedded in some courses in ESL books. So congratulations on your work and everything you. that you've been doing. And thank you so much for, your, you. for your presentation. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. much.